Aside from having one of the best Jerry curls in NBA history, Cage is mainly remembered for his rebounding ability and his time spent as a supersonic from 1988 to 1994. However, Cage is responsible for one of the most impressive stat chasing performances in NBA history, while winning himself a rebounding title in the process. Three-year player at San Diego State University, Cage led the program in all-time rebounds and points after graduating, still currently holding the rebound record at 1,317. Cage impressed NBA scouts enough to go 14th overall in the incredibly stacked 1984 draft to the Clippers, who at the time were in San Diego. Cage was not a flashy offensive player, but was a proven scorer and rebounder at the college level, and was also a hometown favorite. The Clippers select Michael Cage of San Diego State. As a 16-year NBA veteran who started in 733 games, it's hard to argue that Cage didn't find some success in the league. Although when you see he was drafted two spots after Cage, it's easy to see why he could be overlooked. John Stockton of Gonzaga University. The 1984 draft also saw a few familiar faces go in the top 5, which is likely why Cage is not mentioned as a feature of one of the best draft classes of all time. By the 87-88 season, the Clippers had already relocated to Los Angeles and since the 1984 draft night had a putrid 75-171 and record. The 87-88 season wasn't much better for the Clippers and by April 24th, 1988, they had already locked up last place with a 17-64 and record. The only thing between the Clippers and Summer Break was about with the above average Supersonics, led by Tom Chambers, Dill Ellis, and Russ Schoen. They were also 43 and 38 at the time. Throughout the bleak Clippers season, one of the only bright spots was the individual performances of Michael Cage, who finished the year with a respectable 14.5 points per game and 13 rebounds per game. Heading into the last game of the season, Cage was second in the NBA for rebounding and was averaging a monster 19.2 total rebounds per game in April. The only problem is that the number one spot was held by Charles Oakley on the Bulls, who was just coming off an insane 35 rebound performance in a loss to Cleveland. Right over the hoop to Oakley. Oakley's 35 rebounds would become an NBA record for the most boards grabbed in one game, and one that remains untouched to this day. Despite all this, when Michael Cage showed up to the locker room on April 24th, 1988, someone had left a note on his locker that read, 28 rebounds and you are the rebounding champion. You can do it, Cage. At that point, Cage had never grabbed more than 23 rebounds, but had impressively hit that mark already five times that season. Cage started the game at a great pace, and by the fourth quarter, he only needed four rebounds to reach 29 total. However, with five minutes left in the game, Cage was exhausted and had only grabbed 26 rebounds in 43 minutes played, by his own account. I tell you, I got kind of nervous. The team was setting in, my legs were cramping up. nearly two minutes remaining, Cage finally hauls down his 29th rebound off a miss by Sedell Threat. After battling with teammate Mike Woodson for a loose ball rebound at a minute 51, Michael Cage finished the game with 48 minutes played and 30 rebounds, good enough to be tied with Howard, Bynum, and Rodman for the sixth most rebounds grabbed in an NBA game. More importantly, Oakley finished his game against the Celtics that night with 21 rebounds. Despite running away with the total rebounds, Cage had played 10 last games that year. This meant one thing for the final standings. I'm Michael Cage, and I just showed you how it's done. Miraculously, Cage finished the game with a total rebounds per game of 13.028, inching past Oakley's 13.0. This would be the second closest finish for the award, as Wes Unsell defeated Dave Cohen's in the 1974-75 season by 0.01. Although Cage won the rebounding title, Oakley, Jordan, and the Bulls would move on to the playoffs. Cage, on the other hand, was left planning a summer theme party for the Clippers named Summers Here. Cage would be traded to the Sonics the following season and only surpass 20 rebounds three more times in his career. Although Cage isn't a Hall of Fame level player, you could argue that he's one of the most underrated rebounders of his era. 
modern day comparisons to Tristan Thompson could be made, as both players produce incredible rebound numbers with limited offensive skill sets. Cage is now a broadcast analyst for the OKC Thunder, but one last gem from his career is that the nicknames given to him by the media were Windex Man and John Shaft, the former because he was always cleaning the glass, and the latter because apparently he loved wearing leather. True.